From the station that's on your side, you're watching News 19 at 7. And good evening now. Thanks for being with us here on this Thursday night. Lots going on in our world over the last several days and weeks, so we want to dive right into some of the big issues with South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, who has agreed to be our guest tonight. Senator, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. There is so much to oh, talk man. about. First and foremost, on a lot of people's minds, mm -hmm. the situation in North Korea. As, right. as you know, ten From tensions have been escalating right. between the U.S. and North Korea for several months now as North Korea continues to test and fire missiles. Mm -hmm. President Trump just a couple of days ago making this remark. Take a listen. Best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. He has fire and fury like the world has never seen. What do you make of those comments? I think he's trying to put China and North Korea uh, on notice that the game has changed. President uh, Trump is rejecting the doctrine of strategic patience, which has failed for 25 years. He's told me, and I think he's going to tell China and North Korea, that he's not going to allow North Korea to develop a, uh, a missile with a nuclear weapon on top that can hit America. That if he had to use military force to stop that from happening, he would. I think that's the right call because we can't live as a nation under the threat of nuclear attack from a crazy man in North Korea. You have said and you've gone on record as saying that you're standing behind the president. Yes. You're saying he won't contain the situation. He's going to deal Deny with it. Deny it. So there's two strategies. You could let them get a nuclear uh, weapon. They've got a nuclear weapon. They could get a missile. They could marry the two together. And you can say, if you ever use it, we're going to wipe you out. The problem is that they'll keep getting more weapons and more missiles, and I'm afraid they'll sell it. Name one thing that North Korea has developed that they haven't sold. They're a regime uh, uh, cash starved. So the right call, I think, is to tell the regime in North Korea that we will deny you the capability to hit America with a nuclear weapon and mean it when you say it. How is this all going to end? Uh, China's the key here. If I were the president, I would tell China my red lines about uh, missile technology. If they cross these lines, if they get a missile that can actually hit America with a nuclear weapon on top, then all bets are off and give China two bad choices, dealing with a crazy man in their backyard, rein him in because they have 90 percent of the North Korean economy, or there'll be a war in your backyard. The key to this is China. Nobody ever believed Obama would use force without a credible threat of military force. You'll never end this through diplomacy. I'm hoping and praying that sanctions and diplomacy works. And the only way that will work is if the North Koreans believe we're serious about protecting our homeland. Well, earlier today, the CIA telling several media outlets uh, confirming basically that North Korea has that miniaturized right. nuke and that they can uh, put them in their missiles. I mean, that has to be alarming. Well, I'm not going to talk about classified information here, but I can tell you this is a matter of time before they protect. Uh, pro, uh, they get technology, perfect technology of a missile and a bomb on top of it that can hit America. That's what they want to do. That's what they're trying to do and it would be crazy to let them accomplish that task. So I, I'm convinced that Donald Trump would use military force to protect the American homeland from a nuclear missile threat uh, coming from North Korea. That's not an unreasonable thing. And to all the smart people who are criticizing the president, most of them have had a chance to deal with North Korea and they fail miserably. Every Republican and every Democrat before Donald Trump has failed when it comes to North Korea. We're running out of time. There's no place else to kick the can. I'm standing by the president to be firm with North Korea before it's too late. You mentioned the president uh, possibly using military force here. How does that scenario play out? Does President Trump need to go to Congress and get authorization for any type of military action against North Korea? In my view, no. That he has the ability as commander in chief to protect the country from any threat at any time. Only Congress can declare war, but we're talking about a preemptive strike if necessary to prevent a missile from being developed that can hit America with a nuclear weapon. I would like to have that debate. I think it would be good if Congress, Republicans and Democrats could get behind the idea that we're going to stand up the North Korea. We're not going to let them hit our homeland with a nuclear weapon on top of an ICBM. That would strengthen President Trump's hand. At the end of the day, it's not about Republicans and Democrats. It's about us as a nation. It won't be long till every city in America is subject to being hit by North Korea if we don't act decisively. 
decisively. And there are some folks in Washington, obviously, that don't have your way of thinking when it comes right. to this. They believe that the president has to go through Congress right. to get the authorization to do anything. Well, I, I, uh, Kennedy didn't go to Congress when it came to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, Reagan didn't go to Congress when it came to Grenada. I prefer we all be on the same sheet of music. I prefer that Congress stand behind the president. Put yourself in President Trump's shoes. You've got a crazy man. What they do to their own people in North Korea, I can't tell you on television, but the last person in the world you want to give a missile with a nuclear weapon on top is Kim Jong-un, given the way he's treated his own people and what he said about us. So President Trump doesn't have many choices left. There are no good options left when it comes to North Korea, but China is the key, and I really believe this. If China really believes we're serious about protecting the American homeland from North Korea, they will up their game. You mentioned the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah. Is this on par with that right now, do you think? Are we at that stage yet? If you ask me of all the things that keep me up at night, North Korea with the capability to strike America with a nuclear weapon and Iran one day getting a nuclear, nuclear weapon on top of the list, uh, the technology is being developed in front of us. Uh, they're very provocative in their uh, language and actions toward the United States. They're threatening Guam. So time is running out. We still have time. We're not in imminent threat, but over the course of the next year or two, President Trump's going to have to make a decision. And if there is a war with North Korea, it will be because, it will be because North Korea chose a war. We're not going to invade North Korea to change the regime. We're not trying to unify North Korea and South Korea. We're only trying to protect the homeland from an unacceptable threat. At the end of the day, do you think this is where this is ultimately, ultimately headed, some sort of military confrontation with North Korea? Uh, China is the key. Right. Stop it now. It only gets worse later. I don't want your grandchildren, you've got a bunch of them, to grow up in a world where the Kim Jong-un, who's 30, will have a hydrogen bomb one day. He's not going to stop until somebody makes him stop. Uh, he's a very dangerous man. I don't think he wants to have his regime destroyed. And the only way you're going to stop him is to convince him that if he continues to threaten our country, that's the end of him and his regime. This is the world in which we live. There are no good options left, but I would not, if I were President of the United States, allow this man the capability to strike our homeland with a nuclear weapon. And I don't believe Donald Trump is going to allow that to happen, and I hope Congress will get behind it. The latest threat coming just yesterday with North Korea saying basically they're preparing for some sort of action against Guam, Guam yeah, yeah. by the middle of the month, which is in about a week from now. Well, it's Guam today, and it could be California tomorrow, and it could be South Carolina down the road. If you don't stop this man, he's going to have a hydrogen bomb, not a uranium bomb. He's going to have a bunch of missiles, not one. So if they fire at Guam, all bets are off. General Mattis has told them that will be the end of the regime. So uh, the commander in chief has an obligation to every American, including those in Guam, to protect them against uh, crazy people with nuclear weapons. So if, if he fires at Guam, all bets are off. There are two scenarios that will lead to war with North Korea. If they attack an American interest, including Guam or our allies, or if they continue to develop a missile that can hit America with a nuclear weapon on top. If we have to, we'll go to war. I don't want to, but if we have to, we'll go to war, and I'll tell you who will win that war. We will. Senator Lindsey Graham, this is uh, just one issue we want to get to. If you can hang tight, we're going to take a I quick will. commercial break. We'll be back. We'll be talking more about health care, taxes, VC summer, and other issues important to you. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're continuing our discussion with Senator Lindsey Graham tonight. We touched on North Korea before the commercial break, but we want to move on to some other issues important to you. Health care in right. our nation's capital. Once again, the Senate voting not to repeal and yeah, replace. Right. Um, what's going on with health care? Is there going to be another vote in the next few weeks or few months? If we don't, we're crazy as Republicans. We've promised the entire nation if you give us control of the House, the Senate, and the White House will repeal and replace Obamacare. Obamacare is not working. We're down to one provider in South Carolina, one, with a 30 percent increase in premiums coming. is failing all over the country. So uh, we should get back at it. We should have another vote with a new idea, and I've got a new idea. It's not enough to complain, so here's what I want to do. I want to take all the money we'd spend in Washington on Obamacare and block grant it back to the states. You have to spend it on health care, but let states design health care systems unique to their needs. Under Obamacare, four states get all the money, JR. Uh, New York, California, Massachusetts, and Maryland, they get 40% of the money, not all, but 40%, and they're 20% of the population. 
under my bill, by 2026, every state will get the same amount per patient from the federal government with flexibility to design a health care system unique to South Carolina. What you need in California and South Carolina may be completely different. So achieve parity in terms of federal government contributions, give flexibility to the states, that ends single-payer health care, and it gives you a voice. If you have a problem with Obamacare, I don't know who you complain to, some bureaucrat that I've never met. If the state's in charge of your health care, you complain to your state house representative or to your governor, and they will listen because they probably go to the same hospital you do. Your health care bill, is it going to be up for debate soon? Yes, I hope to have it finalized. The Republican governors are very excited about this. I think you'll have some Democrats who, who win big. South Carolina gets 129% increase in the first four years over Obamacare because that's money we'd be sending to California and New York. This is a good deal for most of the states. President Trump campaigned under the promise to do something about taxes, lowering taxes, right. and uh, rebuilding our nation's infrastructure. Where do we stand on both of those issues? So we're going to start the tax cut debate, but if you don't get health care right, you're going to have a hard time cutting taxes because some of the savings we achieve in health care will help us uh, cut taxes. We want a corporate rate somewhere between 15 and 25 percent. We have the highest corporate rate in the world, which is hard to create jobs with a 35 percent rate. We want to consolidate six individual rates into three. We want to eliminate a lot of deductions that allow people not to pay taxes have a flatter, simpler tax code. We need to do it by the end of the year, the first part of next year, and infrastructure is where you find bipartisanship. I think there's 75 votes in the United States Senate for an infrastructure bill to rebuild roads, bridges, and ports, because uh, they're all falling apart. Is infrastructure, perhaps taxes, something the president should have started with before going into health care? We should have started with infrastructure, because that brings the country together. Health care is very difficult. I, I think I found the way forward, which is a block grant, getting the money and power out of Washington back home. But I think it would have been smarter to do infrastructure. Every state has roads and bridges that are falling apart. Look at South Carolina. Our port needs to be deepened, so do other ports. So an infrastructure bill would have been the best way to, to lead off, but we're going to get there. And as a Republican, We've run out of excuses here. So if you're mad at the Republican Congress, you have every right to be. I want to move on to another subject that's uh, been front and center here in the Midlands over the last couple of weeks, and that is the stoppage of construction yeah. at the VC Summer Nuclear Power Plant on those two reactors out there. It's my understanding that the Energy Department under Rick Perry has offered loans to SCANA and yeah. SCENG to continue the project but they turn those loans down, why? Uh, you need to ask them that, but here's the question we need to ask as a nation. Why can't we build nuclear power plants and everybody else can? Russia builds nuclear power plants. 70% of the power in France comes from nuclear power. China builds nuclear power plants. What is it about America that you can't build big things anymore? We, these are the first three plants, one in Georgia, two in South Carolina, to be built in 30 years. Jimmy Carter took us out of the nuclear energy business. I want a nuclear renaissance. Nuclear power is clean. It creates great jobs, and failure is unacceptable. It takes $4 billion to close the damn thing down. Let's build it. Let's go to the Department of Energy, not only ask for loans, but from a national security point of view, I want this country to be a nuclear nation. I want us to be a nuclear power nation. It's clean energy. It creates jobs. It makes us energy independent. But here's the question for the country. What is it about our industrial industrial base that doesn't allow us to complete big projects anymore. So you're, you're all for the loan aspect through the Trump administration. What about selling the state-owned utility, Santee Cooper? I've talked to Governor McMaster. If he wants to do that, I'm a thousand percent behind him. How do you explain to a ratepayer that you're paying for a hole in the ground? that you got a plant 40% built and everybody quit in the middle. Westinghouse, the contractor, went broke. Let's find another contractor. Let's find another partner for SCANA. Let's get this done. From a national point of view, it's imperative that we're able to build nuclear power plants because every source of power outside of Mideast oil makes us safer. Nuclear power is clean, is efficient, it creates good jobs, and I will do anything I can to help Governor McMaster, and if he wants to sell Santee Cooper, I'll stand right behind it. And quickly, uh, the FCC jamming cell phone signals yeah. at our state prisons, where do we stand on that? Is that going to be possible? Because uh, these inmates seem to have phones, and they can do whatever they want right I now. I tell you, crooks are the most innovative people I know. They're sending drones into jails to help them break out. Uh, they send messages through text. They actually do business from jail using cell phones. So I talked to Brian Sterling, the head of prisons here. The problem is local uh, customers around the jail may lose their service. So we've got to find a way to knock the crooks uh, offline and knock their cell phones out without knocking yours out. 
but I cannot tell you how dangerous it is to have criminals with cell phones who can conduct business inside a jail. All right, Senator Lindsey Graham, <laughs> thank you so very much for your time. Thank you for thank coming you. in. This Go evening. Gamecocks. Stay with us. <laughs> we'll be right back.